Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, this video is actually highly requested. Lots of you want to put out a poll basically asking what part of English Language Group 1 would you like me to look at? Over a thousand of you voted and basically said, Barbara, Miss, please answer question number two for the language exam okay the language paper one exam question two is the language question lots of you still find this question quite mystifying so what i want to show you guys is actually this question once you figure out what the examiners are looking for it's actually quite easy and straightforward now remember in terms of timings for the exam this question is worth eight marks therefore try to aim to write at least two pill paragraphs within 10 minutes that's around five minutes per paragraph now in terms of firstly what the examiners are looking for this question tests your AO2. What that simply means is they test your awareness of subject terminology. When it comes to talking about language, are you able to show that you understand alliteration, sibilance, simile, onomatopoeia, pathetic fallacy, semantic fields? Are you able to identify that in the extract and then write about it and show how it describes whatever you're asked to describe within the extract that you're given. That's the first element of this question. Of course, there's also another somewhat troublesome bullet point within the question you're always asked to comment on sentence forms. Sentence forms is technically structure. However, you do need to talk about how sentences are used in this question. I would say the easiest way to make sure you're also answering that bullet point, right? So in addition to talking about language, how you answer the sentence form point is for one of you pill paragraphs, talk about how the writer say uses a simile in the declarative sentence to convey whatever you're asked to talk about. Declarative sentence is the easiest sentence type to talk about. It simply means a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. When I'm speaking, I'm speaking in a range of declarative sentences. Anything that you read is written in a range of declarative sentences. So that's an easy win. Now, given that you guys obviously want to see a model response, what I decided was to answer question number two in the November 2019 paper, don't get, however, too fixated on the paper itself. Look more at the model answer, which I'm going to walk you guys through and look at how I lay out my paragraphs, how I weave in language analysis and how I answer keywords in the question. That's the skill that you need to be taking into the exam. And of course, when it comes to actually applying this skill, make sure you are super, super clear on the different language techniques. If you can't remember these language techniques, make sure you refer to the video well, literally outline language techniques, structure techniques in five minutes, watch that video, and you'll be super sharp and clear on language. So let's get, uh, let's dive into how to answer question number two of this particular paper. So let's look at how to answer question number two. Now, this question, of course, the extract I'm gonna be referring to is the extract that came up in the November 2019 paper. I've already pre-prepared this response, so I'm not gonna read through the extract. However, just bear in mind that this is the extract where you have Zoe as well as her husband, they're skiing, and initially it starts off being quite silent. She's really enjoying the landscape, taking in the scenery, however, as the passage progresses, she ignores the warning signs that there might be an avalanche. For instance, here, we learn that she feels a slab of snow slip from underneath her. She totally ignores that. And it takes her husband at the end, rushing to her and telling her to get to the side. That's when she realizes that she is in massive danger with her husband. However, this is too late because they are completely plunged into the snow, okay? And it ends with silence, but the silence is now really ominous. Now, with question number two, you don't have to look at the entire extract, okay? Question number two, the great thing about this question is you tend to have the extract that's given to you. So of course, after you've read the entire extract and you've kind of absorbed what's going on, you then simply just use the information that's presented right here in front of you. As this question is worth eight marks, I would suggest trying to go for at least two pill paragraphs, pill meaning point evidence explanation link. And of course, this question requires you to talk about language techniques. In this case, how does the writer use language to describe Zoe's feelings? So you're thinking about what language devices does the writer use to convey Zoe's feelings? And of course, as I mentioned, you need to make sure in one of your pill paragraphs, you simply make clear reference to sentence forms and sentence types. To be honest, your default should just be how they use whichever language technique in a declarative sentence. A declarative sentence is the most common form of a sentence. It's a sentence that states a fact, feeling or mood. As long as you mentioned that, you were addressing this question. So when you get this type of question, how should you approach it? Number one, when you have this bit of extract, 
Try to select something from the beginning and the end. Do not take two bits of evidence for your two peel paragraphs right next to each other. So don't take something from the start and then another sentence right next to it because it comes across as a little bit lazy to your examiner. You want to show that you have a range of different examples that you're selecting. And the best way to, the best way to do that, select something from the beginning. As you can see here, I've highlighted as clear and as pure as ice, which is a simile as well as how this mountain breathed back to her. So simile coupled with the personification, that's the beginning. And what this is illustrating is this silent moment that Zoe is looking out on, on this mountain is, you know, it's so amazing. It almost gives her this sense of clarity. She's clear headed, okay? And this is shown through the simile and personification. So I'm gonna talk about that and show you how you can analyze this and go into detail and even zoom in on particular words. But then also the way it ends here, this idea when she's talking to herself, she's looking out at this vast landscape and she's saying, I'm alive, I'm an eagle. Now this metaphor is really powerful because it almost shows that being on this quiet, vast mountain makes her feel really weightless, okay? Of course, if you haven't read this extract, I would suggest going to AQA's website, download this paper, just read the extract, and then you're gonna see what I mean when I'm explaining it in this way, okay? So make sure you read that extract first, then come back and watch this video. Anyway, as I mentioned, when you're tackling question number two, make sure you write at least two pill paragraphs. That's roughly gonna be around five minutes per point. First pill paragraph, pointing out a, a language technique as well as maybe coupling it with a sentence form in your opening pill paragraph. And of course your second pill paragraph, once more taking another language technique, maybe from the ending, and then possibly coupling it with the sentence form. You don't have to do it for both paragraphs, okay? As long as you talk about sentence form in one paragraph, you're good and you're completely covered. So let's have a look at how I responded to this question, okay? Using the point, evidence, explanation, and link method. So here's my first paragraph where I'm going to embed these two bits of evidence. Here's my point. Firstly, it's evident that Zoe feels a deep sense of contentment, which means happiness, when she is on the mountain. Indeed, being on the mountain and inhaling its atmosphere gives her a sense of clarity, a sense of clear-headedness. Of course, as you can see, also I'm answering this question using ambitious language and ambitious vocabulary. That's my opening sentence. Here's my evidence. So this is my opening point followed with my evidence. The area seemed as clear and as pure as ice, so I've embedded this. And Zoe enjoyed how, second bit of evidence, the mountain breathed at her, okay? So I've skipped this out and used ellipsis to uh, put that sentence together. So I've embedded two bits of evidence in my evidence part of my paragraph. Now here's my explanation. This is where the bulk of your marks are. This is where you are racking up your AO2, your assessment objective two. You're showing an awareness of language and structure and you're showing it through using relevant subject terminology. Here's my explanation. The right use is simile coupled with personification. So I refer to both of these techniques to present the surroundings as being pristine, which means perfect. The adjective, now I'm zooming in on one particular word, pure. So I've decided to zoom in on that word illustrates to us as readers that being on the mountain has really cleared Zoe's mind. In fact, she's able to think clearly. That's my explanation. I've mentioned language technique, simile, and personification, and I'm saying what the effect is after I've zoomed in on one word. I still haven't mentioned sentence form, so of course I need to make sure I mention sentence form in my second pill point. Here's my link. Thus, we can see Zoe feels at peace. She is incredibly happy and elated, which means happy to be on the mountain as it gives her peace. That's my first paragraph. And I keep on making reference back to the question. Remember, when you're referring back to the keywords in the question, which you need to highlight in the question, you need to repeat and reinforce the keywords. You're not over repeating yourself. You're showing the examiner. I totally understand what I need to answer in this question. That's my first pill paragraph. Now I'm gonna shift and look at this reference to how she's an eagle. She feels almost like she's weightless, right? So she's so excited to be on this mountain. It's almost like she's transcending her body, rising above her body. So this is the second point I'm gonna include in my second pill paragraph. So starting off with my second point. Furthermore, Zoe feels so alive that she almost feels like she can fly. Being on the mountain gives her a feeling of transcendence, ambitious language, as she likens herself to a bird. So she's able to almost rise above gravity as she compares herself to a bird. That's my opening point, here's my evidence. She asserts I'm an eagle, keeping it quite simple. Now I'm gonna unpack this evidence. Joyce uses a metaphor, so this is the surname of the author, in this declarative sentence. So I have made sure that I've referred 
two sentence forms this troublesome bullet point. So Joyce uses a metaphor in this declarative sentence to convey how high and energetic Zoe feels. The noun eagle, zooming in once more, you need to make sure you zoom in on particular words in the language question. So the noun eagle is especially vivid as we sense that Zoe feels like she's so light and alive on her skis that she can rise above gravity and fly. That's my explanation where I go into use of metaphor language analysis, sentence form declarative sentence, I then zoom in and do some more word level analysis. So here I've really, really firmly gotten my AO2 marks. Here's my link back to the question. Consequently, we as readers can see that Zoe feels empowered, so she feels really powerful, and energy filled on the mountain. She almost believes that she can transcend her body, meaning rise above her body and fly. That's my second pill paragraph where I start off my point, evidence, explanation, and then I linked it back to the question. And as I mentioned, question number two, to be honest, once you are clear on language and structure techniques, and especially language for this question, once you're clear on that, and once you also use a range of examples from this box, actually this question is really, really straightforward. As long as you make sure you refer back to how the writer uses language, and then in your explanation, you unpack, okay, so maybe they're using simile, and this is what this means. Maybe they're using personification, this is what this means. Maybe they're using this noun. I'm gonna zoom in on this one particular word, and this is how it illustrates Zoe's feelings, and this is exactly how you can do so, okay? So I hope this helps when it comes to how to tackle question number two of this exam.